We're just outside the uh, International Convention Centre in Jerusalem and with me I have Dr Peter Jensen, former Archbishop of Sydney and uh, also the General Secretary of the GAFCON movement. Um, what's the good thing about GAFCON? Uh, well that, uh, <laughs> the good thing is that I love it. Uh, being here, there's a statement which uh, an African bishop said to me once, a uh, Nigerian, he said, now we know we're not alone. It was a great thing for him to say. Uh, I thought the Nigerians, well, they, they're so strong, they don't need anyone else. No, that's not true. Now we know we're not alone. So one of the great things about GAFCON is communion. This is the Anglican communion having communion. And here we are, and it's not just a group of bishops, it's a group of laity mm -hmm. and clergy and bishops. And we're here to do a great job. We've got a job to do. We're not just at a conference, we've got work to do. And that makes it so much better. Take me back in the history to 2008 and yeah. the first GAFCON conference. And it was this city, this place. It and was. Yeah. To tell us yeah. about, well, the emotion, the feeling, but the facts of that conference. Sure. Well, of course, there were about half the number that we've got this time, mm -hmm. uh, a little more than half. Uh, still the same thing. It's called a Global Anglican Future Conference with a reason. It's not the Anglican Communion slowly fading into the sun like the British Empire. This is the Anglican Communion of the future. And it brings together people from all around the world and people with laity and clergy and so forth and so on. So it did so in 08 and it's done so again this time. Now, why did we meet in 08? Well, trace it back to 1998 because there was a Lambeth conference that year and there was a, a big issue on the table about human sexuality. And to the surprise of many there, the conference overwhelmingly came up with a very strong biblical statement uh, saying that sexual relations are intimacy is meant for marriage. Uh, it said a number of other things, but it said that preeminently biblical. And it was overwhelmingly the idea of Lambeth 110. And everyone packed up and went home and said, that's great, that's, that's what we believe. But unfortunately, uh, there were those in the communion who were just not satisfied with that. In the next 10 years, within that period, we saw things happening which were a breach of Lambeth 110. There was a lot of, a lot of meetings, a lot of people getting together and saying this shouldn't happen, this hasn't happened, this should, and things like that. But then came the crisis of Lambeth 2008. What was going to happen then? And the truth of the matter is that the people were invited back who had broken Lambeth 110. They had, they had behaved in a way which had ripped the communion of the communion. And so therefore, for those of us who were then invited to share and to mm. have communion with them, we said, we love them, we, we're not hating them. We want them to turn back, but we can't be with them. Our, our message to them... We can't pretend we're on the same team. No, no, no. Yeah. Our message, our, our, our call to them has to be, come back. And the best way to make that call is to say, we're going to stand back so that you know what this is costing us all, namely our fellowship together. You have cost us our fellowship. And if we didn't say that, then everything would go on as before and the point would not be made. And the Anglican communion therefore would not be capable of preaching the gospel and being a mighty instrument of God for the evangelization of the world. The thing that has come to me is this, just how important the Anglican communion is. Now that may sound very strange to some mm -hmm. people listening, but I had to learn that really. Um, you, you grow up in one place and you, you, you know your own patch, but it isn't until you begin to have the experience that God gave me of moving around to many different places and meeting people from all around the world, that you begin to realise that in God's providence, the Anglican Communion is filled with promise. It's filled with wonderful history because through Anglicans, God has brought the gospel to so many people, but it's also filled with promise. It's filled with a promise of reaching the world for Christ and being a great instrument for doing so. But there's a condition. And the condition is that we preach the true Christ and treat, preach him faithfully. And that brings us back to the matter of the boundary. Mm. Because if we're going to say, no, well, you know, your sexual preferences, whatever they are, are okay as long as they're faithful or something like this, 
Well, in the end, we won't be able to call people to repentance mm. and we won't be able to preach Christ faithfully. And so the whole business of GAFCON is not to leave the Anglican Communion or something like that, no, 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 but to summon the Anglican Communion to where it could be and where it should be so that we all together can preach Christ faithfully to the nations. That's the wonderful promise of the Anglican Communion and it's the promise that GAFCON is summoning us to all to. So if the big goal is seeing Christ glorified, the, yeah. the big goal is seeing him honoured, and yeah. actually um, the whole purpose of having cathedrals and bishops and canons and deacons and priests and is all to see Christ glorified. How can it be done better? What, can, what needs to change? What, what, yeah. Yes, uh, well, one of the things, I'm, I'm a great man for the local. I, I don't mean the local pub. I mean, <laughs> I'm a great man for uh, the local in the sense of, of on the ground stuff. And one of the great things about the Anglican Communion is you go around to various places and you find that uh, evangelism has gripped people and that, for example, the Diocese of Singapore mm -hmm. is doing wonderful evangelistic work in Southeast Asia. Now that's only one example. Uh, you can go to South America, you can go to Africa, you can go elsewhere and you'll find that people on the ground are doing this great evangelistic work and sharing the gospel and bringing people to Christ. Now the thing the Anglican Communion can do is to help resource that, help bring it together, help us to be accountable to each other in the way in which we do it. Uh, when you're part of a much bigger fellowship, I hate, I don't like it, I don't like the institution idea. When you're part of a fellowship as big as we are, then you have the, you have the wonderful God-given opportunity of knowing that you're not alone, of testing your gospel, the gospel you're preaching against what others say, so as to make sure you're right, of resourcing each other both ways so that we can better do the job we're doing, of learning from each other. And so uh, both the local is preeminent, but the local can best be done in fellowship with a great worldwide movement. Mm -hmm. uh, being an older man than Dominic, let me say, <laughs> and being brought up by Anglophiles, let me say, uh, we owe a huge debt. We, the whole Anglican Communion, owes a huge debt uh, to the English and to the preaching of the gospel that came to us usually from the United Kingdom, Scotland, Wales, Ireland, but the whole of the United Kingdom, the missionaries, man, many of the people who brought the gospel to us came from those islands. And we must never forget where we got the gospel from. Thank you. Furthermore, uh, the, the Church of England with its structure and the Archbishop of Canterbury have always been, uh, for Anglicans, uh, extraordinarily important. Not in a papal sense, not by any means in a papal sense, but as a sort of a symbol of who we are, what we stand for. And uh, the advice and the wisdom of Archbishops of Canterbury and of others in the uh, structure has, has been prized and valued. Uh, and that's true. And uh, like it or not, well, it's a good thing. It's not a bad thing, it's a good thing. However, it cannot be that, and it never has been the Anglican way to say that the way to Christ is through Canterbury. Canterbury has immense power. Canterbury has the power to draw us together, but it's not the way to Christ. And unfortunately, in the last 20 years, I believe that power has not been used with wisdom and therefore, it has now cast a cloud over Canterbury and over the way in which that power has been used. It's cast a cloud. It's made it very difficult. Uh, and we are longing for the day uh, of very, very clear leadership indeed from the Church of England, from Canterbury. We're longing for the day. Many of us, well, people of my age at least, are longing for the day then we really get very clear leadership, which issues the clarion call to repentance for us all, to putting ourselves under God's word, and for living in a countercultural way in the West, rather than succumbing to the sexual revolution, which is what I think has happened um, in the United States, Canada, and elsewhere. Now, um, uh what happens next? Where does GAFCON go from here? 
Yes. Because it, we don't. It's not a. It's not a moment. It's a movement. It's yeah. a movement. Yes, and it'll be another five years. We'll be doing this again. But what's going to happen now? Interestingly, between the last one in Nairobi and this one, we've made uh, progress on a number of fronts. Uh, we actually now have an office. We have mm -hmm. a communication set up. We're actually mm. projecting. We're telling our story to the world. This is really good. And the thing that I love most, with two things that I really love most, uh, first of all, we've planted a missionary society in England. Mm -hmm. uh, the English were very good at planting missions and missionaries in other parts of the world. Thank God. Mm. And thank God for the English. Uh, but now we've done it too. So the West is the West is turning its back on God, and uh, Gafcon has planted a, a society called the Anglican Mission in England, and we've even provided a bishop for him, for it. Uh, so that's one great thing that's happened uh, from Nairobi. Uh, bishop Andy Lyons is the, is the bishop. The second thing that's uh, happened is we've set up a training school for bishops, uh, which uh, has met three or four times so far. Uh, it's under uh, a Kenyan bishop and it's a way of bringing people together. The life of a bishop is, is a difficult one. It's mm -hmm. very lonely uh, and it needs some special thought. And so this meeting, which is held so far in Kenya, next one's I think going to be in Uganda, uh, has been immensely popular amongst new bishops and indeed some of them not so new. Um, now there are two initiatives that have begun. We haven't done enough yet. There's a lot more still to be done. But come on, it's early days. Mm -hmm. uh, you'll see more in the next five years. Mm -hmm. yeah. Great. Dr. Jensen, thanks very much for talking to us. That's been a real pleasure.